Hi everyone, my name is Sage and I am the Volunteer and Outreach Coordinator here at Kasumnas River Preserve. I am really excited to be participating in the Galt Winter Bird Festival this year. I know it's virtual, very different from previous years, but I hope that this virtual tour is something that you really learn from and you enjoy. It's very different from what we've done in the past. We've never done this tour before, so I'm excited to share this information with you. Um, we're going to be talking about out-of-step birds. So when we think of birds, we often think that they follow a set um, activity depending on each season such as going north for the spring, breeding in the summer, coming back down south in the fall, and then flocking together in the winter. Though many, many birds follow and adhere to this kind of schedule of activities, there are quite a few birds that march to the beat of their own drum. They have their own unique uh, cycle and season for each activity. So I'm gonna be covering some of those birds that you can actually find here at the preserve. And then I'll also touch on other birds that do follow that more normal cycle that are commonly found here at the preserve as well. I did wanna give a um, thank you to one of our amazing volunteers, uh, John Trochet. He helped really create this tour, gather the information and share that with me so that I can share it with you. So thank you so much, John. And I'm really excited, let's get started. So I'm going to start with a look at what exactly a so-called normal cycle for most birds looks like. There are two main patterns of birds in the land they use. One pattern is for the species that remain settled for the whole of the year, resident birds. The second is for species that breed in one area and spend the non-breeding season in another, called migratory birds. For most resident and migratory species, there are two very demanding activities they need to accomplish annually. One, breeding, and two, replacing their feathers. This action is called molt, where they shed their feathers to make way for new growth. For birds that move between seasons, they have a third demanding activity, migration. Migratory birds in both the northern and southern hemispheres typically move poleward for the breeding season and toward the equator for their winters. For temperate zone breeding birds, it seems difficult or impossible to do two of the demanding annual activities simultaneously. So migrations, breeding, and molt usually do not overlap in time. For birds here at Kasumnas River Preserve, this breaks down into four subsets of birds. Resident species, who are here year-round. Transient species, which are birds that breed north of us and winter south of us. Winter residents, birds here in the non-breeding season and nesting north of us. And summer residents, birds wintering the south but breeding in our area. Typically, transient species pass through in the spring and fall, though a few are found in only one of these seasons. Winter species are here from autumn into spring. Summer species are here from spring to autumn. Breeding birds begin nesting in the spring and conclude variably from late spring through early autumn, depending on the species and year. I would like to note a third and less common pattern of land use among birds, and that is eruptive species. These birds are more or less settled kinds that move away from their areas of residence during the occasional years of food resource collapse. Many of these are seed cone dependent species of montane or northern finches. In some years, these birds may appear very far from their usual haunts, even onto desert flats. So now I'd like to share a few common species you'll see at the preserve that are resident or migratory and fall into each of the so-called normal cycle subsets I mentioned before. Just to warn you, I'll be naming numerous species, but we'll add photos to the screen for reference. Resident birds you'll find at the preserve include red-shouldered hawk, barn owl, California scrub jay, oak titmouse, white-breasted nuthatch, American robin, house finch, song sparrow, California towhee, and common yellowthroat, among other birds. 
Transient birds include shorebirds such as semi-palmated plover, willet, and red-necked phalarope, caspian, foresters, and black terns, and many perching birds such as willow flycatcher, dusky flycatcher, warbling vireo, Swainson's thrush, chipping sparrow, Nashville warbler, McGilvray's warbler, hermit warbler, and Wilson's warbler. Winter residents at the preserve include most waterfowl, such as greater white-fronted goose, tundra swan, northern shoveler, northern pintail, ring-necked duck, bufflehead, and common goldeneye. There are some shorebirds, like the dunlin, least sandpiper, and Wilson snipe. There are also gulls, the ferruginous hawk, prairie falcon, says Phoebe, hermit thrush, varied thrush, American pipit, several sparrows, and yellow rumped warbler. And finally, common summer residents at the preserve include Swainson's hawk, black chinned hummingbird, western kingbird, cliff swallow, bullock's oriole, yellow warbler, black headed grosbeak, blue grosbeak, and lazuli bunting. Now, categorizing these birds in this way isn't always cut and dry. There are some species that are entirely impossible to put into single pigeonholes. For example, on the lower part of the Kasumnas River Preserve, spotted towhee is a resident species. However, at Howard Ranch, which is just east of Highway 99, the spotted towhee is a winter resident. Another example is the red-winged blackbirds, which include two subsets. The bicolored blackbirds are resident at the preserve, but other types are here only in the winter. So now that we've settled some of the more normal, seasonally patterned birds, let's get into those unique, out-of-step birds that truly march to the beat of their own drum. There are a few species that seem to think that spring begins in early winter. Perhaps most well known is the habit of great horned owls to begin nesting around the winter solstice. With a scope, you can now see such a nest at the south end of Lost Slough in a leafless cottonwood. In previous years, this yet nest was used by red-tailed hawks and common ravens. The early start to nesting allows the adults to provide for growing chicks when mammals such as rabbits and hares produce their own babies, or don't. In years when the young mammals are abundant, nests will fledge many owls. In years when the prey base is poor, perhaps no owls will fledge. Another bird that initiates breeding in early winter here at the preserve is Anna's hummingbird. The hummingbirds, in days before feeders were so numerous, really depended on nectar in winter, especially on the flowers of coyote bush. Earlier in the month of January, a preserve volunteer found a male Anna's hummingbird singing and displaying, presumably to an unseen female, over a fairly large patch of coyote bush. Thirdly, Another bird that will initiate breeding in early winter is the great blue heron. The great blue herons commonly will return to their nests of the previous year in late January, and then they'll begin to refurbish the nests and start courting their mates. Now, some migratory birds also don't seem to have their calendars right. The first shorebirds returning south in the fall routinely do so in the third or fourth week of June. Usually the first back are adult greater yellow legs, closely followed by adult short-billed doachers. Sometimes these are back as southbound migrants when late will willow flycatchers or Swainson's thrushes are still trickling north. For shorebirds, it is commonly the case that adults migrate south first followed weeks later by the juveniles. Though these birds can be considered odd, there really isn't anything that's not natural about them, and their less normal cycles don't impact their ability to survive and thrive. If these 
odd birds weren't successfully leaving representation in subsequent generations, they would be doing something else, like nesting or migrating at so-called normal times, or they would simply be extinct. This atypical timing really works for them. So thank you all so much for joining us on this virtual tour this year. I hope you enjoyed the Out of Step Birds talk and learned something new. And if you are wanting to learn more about the preserve, you can check out our website at www.kasumnas.org. We have information on there about the flora, fauna, and history. And also, it shows you how you can plan your own trip so that you can come out and walk the trails yourself and see some of these birds in person. Thank you so much for participating again, and make sure you go to the Galt Winter Bird Festival website to see more activities and opportunities that they have for you virtually this year.